The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faith, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Hi guys, today I want to talk about peace. Peace is something that uh, I think we're feeling the lack of in a lot of respects right now. Something that people are looking for and finding missing. Peace is one of those nine character traits that the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. The things that the Spirit will grow within us as we uh, get out of the way and let Him do His work in us. In addition to being fruit of the Spirit, peace is also a promise. It's a promise of the Father. Way back in Leviticus, which is back sort of near Deuteronomy from last week, God promises this to the people of Israel. If you follow my statutes and faithfully observe my commandments, I will give peace to the land, and you will lie down with nothing to frighten you. I'll remove dangerous, dangerous animals from the land, and no sword will pass through your land. That was a specific promise given to a particular group of people in a particular time. But we see variations on that same promise throughout Scripture, and that reassures us that it's not only a promise for that time and those particular people. It's something that is true of God as a whole in the way that he relates to us uh, and relates to, to humanity as a whole. So it's uh, peace is a fruit of the Spirit, it's a promise of the Father, and it's a gift of the Son. Just before Jesus' death, uh, he said to his apostles, I will ask the Father, and he will send you another counselor, that's the Spirit, to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit. It's a promise of the Father, and it's a gift of the Son. So as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and bring us to a place of peace. We need to remember that fruit, all of the fruit of the Spirit, if you look at them, they are all intended as something for us to share with other people. They are all relational in some respects. Some it's easier to, to see than it is for others, like, you know, faith, it's a little bit more difficult to understand than love. But if you look at them all, you'll see a relational aspect to each one of them, something that we can share between believers and with the people around us who are not believers, it, regardless of who we're with, who comes into our circle of influence. Each of these nine characteristics, including peace, is something that, that we can share, and uh, it's to be given away. Jesus did not say, I'm giving you my peace, just so that we would have something comfy to sit on. Jesus said that in the same, um, same idea as when he said, you have received healing of the sick, raising of the dead, healing of skin diseases, driving out demons. You have received those things. Now, freely give. I gave you those things. Now, you give them away. We receive so that we can give. And this is Jesus' promise. Jesus' promise is, don't be afraid. I give you peace. That's something that we are to share. When he said those things, he was talking to uh, his apostles, the people who were uh, the first followers, the first ones to come alongside him and, and begin to learn how to live the way Jesus wants us to live. So these are the people to whom Jesus said, I give you peace. So in order to better understand exactly what peace is, you got to ask the question, you know, so apostle dudes, how did that work out for you? What did that look like in your life? Jesus, peace. Well, one of the apostles wrote this. 
later in his life. Five times I was whipped, three times I was beaten, once I was stoned by my enemies, three times I was shipwrecked. I have spent a night and a day in the open sea. I faced dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own people, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the open country, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brothers, labor and hardship, sleepless nights, hunger and thirst and cold, the daily pressure on me and my care for all the churches, who is made weak when I am not made weak, who is made to stumble when I did not burn with indignation on their behalf. In the city of Damascus, the governor ordered my arrest, locked the gates, and I had to be let down in a basket through a window in the wall in order to escape. Peace. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that all of the other apostles ended their lives either as martyrs or in exile. So how does that work? Jesus said, my peace I give you. In spite of all that they went through, in spite of all their struggles and, and frustrations and, and disappointments and hurts, we see the apostles writing over and over and over again about the God of peace. Let your mind dwell on things that are true, that are honorable and just, that are pure and lovely and admirable, and the God of peace will be with you. Be wise about what is good, innocent about what is evil. Trust that the God of peace will soon crush the enemy. Now may the God of peace himself set you apart for his service and keep you spirit, soul, and body sound and blameless. The God of peace who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus. He will equip you with everything good to do his will. He will work in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ. Amen. I think what we're looking at here maybe is two different definitions of peace. There's a now definition and there's a not yet definition. The not yet definition is the one that our minds tend to go to when we think of the word peace. We think of tranquility and safety and health and rest. The image of a swan gliding unperturbed across shining waters. This is a definition of peace that we see with God's ultimate fulfillment of his promise. In the book of Revelation, we read, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will no longer exist. Grief and crying and pain will exist no longer. That is God's ultimate promise, his ultimate peace. And then we have the now definition, where we are not so much an unperturbed silver swan gliding along, meeting no obstacles or opposition. We are more a plucky little duck paddling along through a storm. Everything above water is, is just crazy. The waters are rising and falling and the waves are splashing and there are speedboats zooming past and there are predators. And there's snow and there's wind. But beneath the surface of the water, beneath the storm, where the storm can't touch it, there is something strong, something steady, something reliable and trustworthy that is keeping us right side up and moving forward. That is the peace of the not yet. That is the peace of the now. The peace of God is the peace of the God of peace. 
The peace of God is something that Jesus gives us for today. It's something that the Spirit grows within us so that we can share it and spread it so that we can be something strong and steady and reliable when people need help staying right side up and moving forward. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. I'm going to go sing a song, and I hope that you will click on the link up here and join me. It's a wonderful song. It's been around for a long time based on some ancient words. It reminds us that the peace of God is something not only within us, but something that needs to flow from us to a world in need. <laughs> 